to die. Do try not to die. Given that they currently control the ether infrastructure, in all honesty, they have essentially achieved as much already. And what role would using PSO2 to infiltrate Oracle have in taking over the Earth? It just doesn't add up. They certainly have an interest in Ark's world, at the very least. How does that make you feel, oh dimwit, former Mother Corps sister of mine? Can you say one sentence without it sounding like it's coming out of your butt? Jeez! Ah, oh, but yeah, what is Mother after? Hmm, it's been forever since I joined the Corps. And the only reason they gave for recruiting me was that I had what it takes. Had what it takes to get into PSO2, the ability to control ether. So is Mother just rounding up folks with the right ether compatibilities? And those expected to show progress. Ether abilities work the same as any other skill. Practice and comprehension beget progress. Wait, you can practice to get better at this stuff? Like making weapons out of ether? To put it more simply, the more you improve your ether compatibility, the more you can do with ether. General people without any ether affinity can access Oracle via PSO2, controlling their created avatars remotely and enjoy the experience as a game. However, PSO2 is not merely a game. Underneath, the application serves as a means to bring Mother closer to Oracle. Therefore, as the general populace enjoy the game, they're inadvertently collecting information on ARCs and then feeding all of this data back to Mother. PSO2 possesses another purpose, however. It also works as a means of screening for individuals with a higher ether affinity. To explain affinity in simple terms, an individual at affinity level one can dive into PSO2. That is, they can assimilate their generated PSO2 avatar and then they can take control of it, just as if their avatar were their own body. It would seem that Mother seeks out individuals with this level of ether affinity to join Mother Core. Once their affinity increases enough, they reach level two. At this level, individuals can dive without the need for an avatar, transporting their actual bodies to the other side. It doesn't stop there. They also gain the ability to give form to ether to create avatar arms. Which, based on these classifications, would put both Anga and Hitsugi at level two already. The center of Mother Core is made up of people at this level. All of them working to strengthen its grip on our world. And they use that influence however they please to advance their personal agendas, just like Haggith and Bator have. At the heart of Mother Core are seven with even more noteworthy abilities, known as disciples they act as Mother's most trusted aides. Being chosen as a disciple means favor and influence in society and is a thing of prodigious significance. I see. Well, Mother invited Cory and I at level one to join Mother Core. If she could surround herself with accomplished individuals, it's possible she thought it would be enough if the individual eventually reached level two. At any rate, I'm impressed Earth Guide was able to pick up on that. That is because we have the power to influence society as well. No joke. I don't know what it is you've done, but you're, like, titled. Isn't that right, Sir Adam? Since the formation of Mother Corps, 
Those with an ability like that of generating avatar arms have been utilized. Care to elaborate? It is generally referred to as magic. It is an unbroken legacy, passed down in secret since antiquity, and is a supernatural phenomenon. Yeah, it's like, if you think of moving something, you can. If you want to, say, prep a talisman to set up camp, it takes its own prep, though. Earth Guide was not originally at odds with Mother Core. Long ago, it was an organization dedicated to gathering talented individuals to investigate and resolve phenomena the world over. Yeah, they recruited exorcists, wizards, shamans, and what have you. They called them onmyoji in Japan. Those sorts of folks. Angels, demons, oni, yokai, anything supernatural. Dealing with them in secret was Earth Guide's purpose. Originally, these seemingly impossible phenomena occurred so seldom that Earth Guide alone could handle them. However, 12 years ago, conditions changed. When Aether was first discovered and Eska began to spread, that's when Mother Core was first formed? Precisely. That was the turning point when phenomena became more regular and the abilities of certain individuals began to surface. I was also one of those certain individuals. People such as yourself and Anga, whose powers have awakened, can shape ether at will and give it form. Still, even on its own, ether coalesces and takes shape in the form of collective fears of the popular consciousness. In other words, our avatar arms are the embodiment of individual imaginations and phantasms are from collective fears? Yes, that assessment aligns adequately. And now, Mother Core manipulates the phantasms, embodiments of fear that they are, and sets them upon us. In all likelihood, they aim to subjugate the Earth. From time immemorial, we have protected humanity from things not human. What we wrestle with now is no different. However, Mother Core's power far exceeds the ordinary. Our strength alone, I fear may not be sufficient. And so I turn to you. Will you, and Arx, lend us your aid? Will you do so, that we may defeat Mother and return the Earth to the way it ought to be? What the? An earthquake? No. That's... an explosion. Detecting an anomalous reaction from the ether, creating enclosures on Earth. They got here in a hurry. What's the plan, Adam? The time has come to demonstrate Earth Guide's dedication. We will join hands with Arx and oppose Mother. This shall be the staging ground for our struggle. We'll meet them head on, you mean? What a bunch of go-getters we are. Thank <laughs> you.
completed. Okay, understood. Next time, come explain the situation directly to me. Fret not. We can't ignore the problem there either. Farewell for now. Adam, is there something going on with the Mother Corps? No, it's not them. That communication was concerning mediating the ongoing dispute in the Middle East. Apparently, mediation was not an option, because the sheiks were making untenable demands of one another. <sighs> this dispute in the Middle East, would that be the one that gets covered by the news sometimes? Aren't the Earth Guides involved in that too? Yeah, that's right. Since the beginning, the efforts of the Earth Guides have been mainly rooted in dispute resolution and peaceful mediation. It's this current situation of confronting the Mother Corps head-on that's weird. Really? If you look at the Earth Guide history of setting out to parlay and mediate between every country, this is out of the ordinary. The Earth Guides are an organization that supports the world from behind the scenes and leads the Earth in a better direction. Dealing with supernatural phenomena was our chief task in times long past, but now such matters are hardly our concern as a result of the modern era we live in. People are fighting one another. Our opponents are no longer specific phenomena, but people. I could also call the history of humans a history of conflict. I think it's a terribly sad and foolish thing. All I want is to do something, anything with my power to make things better, even just a little bit. <sighs> But it never seems to work out right. Why is it that people fight amongst themselves? Are we not all on the side of humanity? <laughs> <laughs>